Hi, this is Johnny. We're ready to start our Bible study for today, and we're finishing up the chapter on windows. This is the chapter in the Sermon on the Mount, in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, where it says that to bless those who curse you, I'll just read it, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So today we're going to talk more about bless them that curse you. Several years ago I had an opportunity to do that and it was a hard lesson to learn. I had gotten a job at, a, at an elementary school in a large city and my first day went quite well I thought and I was in the main office and we were registering new students and the teachers had come, school had not started yet, but the teachers were there to set up their classrooms and they had a meeting for most of the day they met with the principal. On the second day, when I came back, the office was full of teachers and most of them were black. The principal was a black woman, a beautiful black woman. And that, I, I'm not prejudiced, my husband pastored an all-black church in Barbados, so it didn't bother me and I didn't feel that I was prejudiced against them because of their race and hoped they wouldn't be prejudiced against me. But that day in front of all these teachers of a different nationality, the principal accused me, right in front of everybody, of s stealing money out of her purse the day before. $50. And it shocked me so bad I was speechless because I accepted the Lord when I was eight years old and have lived a Christian life since then. And it was just such a surprise that someone would accuse me <laughs> of stealing money. I, I couldn't get over it. And as the day wore on, it, it just boggled my mind more and more. And when I got home, I told my husband, I, I don't think I can work with that woman. She just accused me of stealing today, and as she cursed, and she said some really ugly things in front of all the teachers, and I had just met these teachers that day. This was only my second day on the job, and I just, I think I'm going to have to tell her tomorrow that if she ever wants to say anything to me again to instruct me or accuse me, to please have the common courtesy to take me in her office, shut the door, and tell me in private. So the next day on the way to school, I was going over and over in my mind how I was going to tell her all this and what I was going to say. And I was just going over in my mind how I was going to tell her, and if she didn't like it, I was just going to quit my job and walk out right then. Well, as I was planning this in my mind, I began to hear myself teaching the lesson in this book that we're studying today. Bless those who curse you. And it was like the Lord said, well, are you going to do what you teach or not? And I thought, you mean I have to do it too, Lord? I have to bless those who curse me? That's hard. That goes against the grain. That's not what the natural man wants to do. And he said, well, if you're going to teach it, you better live it. Now, this book was not in existence then. I had, I had the outline, and I had been teaching the outlines. God had given me the outline for this book one night in prayer, and I had been teaching it. And I taught it for 20 years before I ever sat down to the computer and wrote the book. So I thought, well, I do want to continue teaching it, and I eventually want to write the book and teach it. And I did. I taught it even in the, in the county jail in Orlando when we lived close by there. So I thought, yes, I do want to teach it. Lord, how do I bless her? What do I do to bless her? And it just came to me that I should just say, I bless you, Miss, and I called her Miss Smith. That's not her name. And I said, I started to say, I was driving my car, and I'd said, I bless you, Mrs. Smith. And I thought, that didn't do much. So I said it again, I bless you, Mrs. Smith. I bless you, Mrs. Smith. 
And then I thought, you know, why don't I just throw blessings at her? So I thought, yeah, I'll just throw them. So I went, I bless you, Mrs. Smith. Well, that felt pretty good. So I thought, I'll do that again. I bless you, Mrs. Smith. I bless you, Mrs. Smith. I bless you. And I continued to bless her. And I thought, what, what am I blessing her with? I bless you with salvation. I bless you with peace. I bless you with joy. And I just began to bless her with every good thing that I can think of. Pretty soon tears were rolling down my cheeks. And I was sobbing. And I was blessing her from the bottom of my heart. I meant it. I really meant these blessings for her, and I desired these blessings for her. And by the time I got to school, it takes it took me about 15 to 20 minutes to, to drive to school. By the time I got to school, I, I felt so good towards her that I loved her. It's like I just wanted to go in and hug her. But I didn't, because I didn't want her to think that she had hired a crazy woman. So I went in, and I just did my normal day, and smiled, and talked, and, and, and was my usual self. And do you know, in a few days, that woman seemed like my best friend. She began to talk to me, and she was kind to me. And she would ask me, she knew I was a pastor's wife, and she would ask me, well, church lady, what are your women doing at your church? Are you doing anything special? And if we were having a banquet or some kind of get together, I'd tell her and she'd say, well, what are your decorations? And she helped me make decorations. She was one of the most talented, smart people I've ever known. One of the smartest. Uh, she helped me make all kind of beautiful decorations. We had a, a men's banquet, a father-son lunch. And she asked me what I was decorating. And I said, well, you know, our theme is anchors away. And I would love to have some kind of anchors to set on the table. Well, what color are your tablecloths? I said, blue. We're going to do that vivid blue, a, a vivid blue. And she said, she ran down to the art department and she had the shop man to, to uh, cut out um, anchors out of, sty out of white styrofoam and that fixed them where they would stand up in the middle of the table and they were about so big. They were beautiful on those brilliant blue tablecloths with those white anchors. And when you walked in the room, it's like it caught your breath to see. And that's what she had done for me. And she made uh, gifts to give out to all the women for our different occasions. And she was just a friend. She just became a good friend. Toward the end of the school year, I had a concert and sang songs that I had written. A lady at our church said that I should make, do a concert. She said, I think you're being selfish with your songs. God has given you these songs and you're not sharing them with us and I think you should do a concert. And I thought, oh, that's a good idea. And it was one of the most fun things I've ever done. So we did this concert and we did dramas and it, it turned out to be really good. I felt good about it and the Spirit of the Lord was there. And this, this principal went, I invited her to come and she and the, the library assistant and some of the other teachers came to that concert. The Spirit of the Lord moved upon this principal and I felt good, I felt that I had given her an opportunity to accept the Lord Jesus as her Savior. Now whether or not she did, I wasn't sure, but I knew she had a chance to know about it. A few years later, we had moved from there, and several years later someone sent me an obituary out of the newspaper where she had passed away. I was so thankful that that day at school I had not gone in there and told her off and told her what I thought and how she had bothered me and, and been unkind to me, but I showed the love of God and I obeyed the Sermon on the Mount in Jesus' teachings in that sermon. You know, he said in that Sermon on the Mount, he said those that keep these teachings, they're going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. He said if you don't keep them, you'll be the least in the kingdom of heaven. So it gave me hope that even had I been ugly that day, 
there's a possibility I would have made it into the kingdom of heaven, but I would not have received a reward for the attitude that I determined in my own heart to, to keep and to do toward her, toward someone who cursed me. I blessed her. That's that's the lesson for today, and I hope it's meant a little something to you, and, and maybe you can use it in your life. Read Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And if you'd like one of my books, you can email me, or you can just meet me on Facebook and make a comment on my Facebook page and ask for one of these books. I'll, I'll let you know how to receive it. I'll see you again next Tuesday on Turnaround Tuesday. Let the Lord Jesus turn your life around. Bye now.